So hi everyone, welcome back to Solaris. Today I thought I would look at uh, collective consciousness because this honestly isn't kind of vampire I've played before very much. The civics we've gone for are interesting. A natural neural network which allows unemployed pops to produce science and gives you plus one research alternative. Now I think this is great because ordinarily unemployed pops are just kind of a problem. And even though producing science doesn't seem like a great thing necessarily, I think they're very cost effective when you compare them to normal scientists. We're also, we've gone for um, ascetic, right? Which increases habitability by 5%, gives you reduction in pop amenities. Uh, racial points, we've gone hive minded, obviously. Extremely adaptable, so where you can inhabit a lot more planets. We've also gone for rapid breeders. So I really want to get population up as quickly as possible so we can benefit from natural neural network. And on the downside, we've got slow learners, um, fleeting and unruly. So all in all, we've got plus 25 habitability here, plus five with ascetic and plus 20 with the extreme habitability. We've also gone for tree of life, which gives some really interesting bonuses. I don't know if I've used Tree of Life before, so again, this is quite interesting. Okay, and we're on a small universe, a tiny actually, with a lot of different players. This is generally how I like to play, because if you don't go for enough players, then you end up with massive empires, and it's, I don't know, not great. Two things I want to point out. Firstly, if you want to have a look at the bonus that you get from the Tree of Life, then it's here. So. In a nutshell, you get pop growth speed increased by 15%, which is freaking brilliant because our pop growth speed is already um, fast because we're rapid breeders. We've got society research bonus. Housing is increased by 10, which again is great. So I guess everyone's living in the tree. And max agriculture districts are increased by four. And I get all of that with just an upkeep of four food. Now, one of the reasons I usually turn on automation is a lot of the um, blockers are going to be cleared automatically. So that's always useful. And as you guys can see, I've paused it, but we've got a neighbor and it's perhaps the worst possible neighbor we could have. I did put it on advanced start, so I assume they're um, obviously economically and militarily superior to me. So we'll have to see if they, well, want to wipe me out. Though. I think I might be okay, but uh, yeah, not the best start in it really because I kind of wanted to use um, diplomacy, but I suppose I still could. So there's two interesting things here. If you want to build a colony, then you require a thousand food and uh, 50 alloys. So this is actually quite a huge requirement to build a new colony. Secondly, the Ascension perks, it's about the same as usual, I guess, but it's a slight change here. Um, instead of going for technological ascendancy, seeing as how we're plant-based creatures and we've got a tree of life, I was thinking of going for mastery of nature. Now there is a reason beyond sort of RP why I'm doing this, RP meaning roleplay. I kind of think that if we've got a population that's a rapid replicator or a rapid breeder, and we've also got the 15% growth from the Tree of Life. Actually having more districts might be really useful, so I think I'm gonna go for Mastery of Nature as my first perk. Now, Next, I think I'm gonna go for Synchronicity because it reduces my food consumption by 10%, and at the moment, I'm using so much food to colonize other planets, so I kind of figure the 10% reduction in consumption would be really useful. I suppose I've also got problems with energy, but I'm building more districts to compensate, so yeah. Synchronicity seems like a good thing to go for. I know I said about discovery, but I don't know. I've already explored a lot of area and it kind of seems like I'm hemmed in a bit. So I'm continuing to grow. As you guys can see, there was um, some kind of aliens around this area, which I can't currently take out because they're quite powerful. Uh, I could potentially take these out here um, at some point. But uh, yeah, there's um, 
an interesting species that's down here with overwhelming fleet power. Again, I did put on advanced start for some of the uh, enemies, and it seems like I'm next to two of them, so... Yeah. I'm not so worried about improving relations with these guys. I'm already improving relations with my machine neighbors, because uh, I really don't want them to attack me. But yeah, I'm just continuing to build up my military force. or neighbours, the Machine Empire proposed an aggression pact. As far as I'm concerned, that's fine with me. I'd much rather sort of take out the NPCs, well, they're all NPCs I suppose, but um, I'd much rather take out the aliens than actually have to deal with these guys for a while. And plus, Machine Empires seem to have um, huge advantage, generally speaking, and you know, they are superior to us, so I'm going to accept, I think. Oh, I've just completed synchronicity. And I think I'm going to go for Technological Ascendancy here. I've completed Synchronicity as you saw, so I went for Adaptability. And the Environmental Diversification is great for our species because we've already got 25% Habitability increase by default. So an extra 10% will really unlock sort of a lot of our potential. But anyway, as you guys can see, our Habitability has increased up to 90% means fewer amenities, upkeep, resources and whatnot. So I've been thinking about this and it would be really interesting to go down the Flesh's Weak route, but unfortunately I can't because I'm a hive mind, so um, I'm kind of incompatible. But anyway, the engineered evolution route is going to be pretty decent too. It'll give me three points of genetic modification to play with and unlock cloning bats apparently. If it does unlock cloning bats, that'd be interesting because I already have spawning pools, which give me a very high growth rate of um, 6.15, which, you know, I think is very high anyway with the um, tree of life bonus. So, oh, we do have cloning bats, which increases growth rate by a third. Wow. I'm gonna get some incredible growth rate, guys. I'll let you know how it goes. I've removed Unruly now that I'm genetically modifying with species and I'm very tempted to put in Intelligent because it would give me plus 10% research. But on the other hand, I'd also be very interested to go for food because we've got incredible growth rates and I'm using a huge amount of food. Actually, if you look at this, this is a desert world. I'm only getting 55%. So what I think I'm going to do, I'm actually researching habitability modification. So I might split my species in two and get a desert variant of my species, which won't suffer any problems. And this will also enable me to conquer more worlds if I've got sort of um, species with multiple different habitability. So I think I'll do that. So guys, we've got habitat. Um, well, the ability to change the species habitat now. So if we look at this tundra well, for example, we're only getting 55% uh, habitability. What we're going to do, we're going to go to our species tab. We're going to go modify tundra preference. Okay, excellent. And now we are going to um, update the template and we are only going to apply it to alpine and tundra worlds. Okay. So what this is going to do, this is going to change the population on these planets to only be Tundra. And that should get rid of the um, horrible debuff and make the little tiny star system up here way more productive. So guys, I'm going to um, take some of this territory down here. To be honest, it's been a while since I've really done anything. Um, got a scientist ready to go down here. Also um, built another construction ship, so as soon as this is done, we'll take it over. Now, I'm fairly sure I can... Um, uh, two, 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 two. Uh, not quite powerful enough to um, take this secondary area. This area, however, I might be able to take. 
things. I need to remind you, stay home, play computer games. It's of absolute national security. So, excellent. We now have evolutionary mastery ready to go. So as you can see, we've gone for synchronicity, prosperity, adaptability, and expansion so far. So evolutionary mastery will again, I mean, I'll have to go through all my, all my species modifying it, but nevertheless, this is a um, big step forward. So congratulations me, I guess. So let's talk briefly about habitats. If I put a habitat on this planet, for example, there will be no bonuses or anything like that. However, if you look at this planet, or this planet rather, this has six um, minerals on it. So if I build a colony around here, I'll be able to mine this planet from the comfort of my colony. And that'll be a, a huge advantage. So yeah, these bonuses are really important. If you're short of energy, which most people usually are, or at least I am, then taking worlds with energy gives you a huge advantage. 